if you want an electric saloon car, that is great to drive. Of late, you've had one real standout choice, and that is the Porsche Taycan. But now, there's a BMW as well. This is it behind us, the new BMW i4. You could call it the first electric BMW M car. Is it any good? Let's find out. So the i4 is, in this spec, effectively M Division's first battery electric vehicle. And M is on quite a good run of form at the minute. The M3 and M4 are hilarious. The M3 did really well at our Britain's Best Driver's Car competition earlier in the year. And it's this same platform, effectively, that has been modified to have a large battery pack underneath it that provides the basis for the i4. This one is the M50. There's a 40, which is a little bit slower. This one is about 63,000 quid, which is what puts it on par with the Taycan S, but the 50, the M40, sorry, is something like 53 grand, so it's a bit cheaper again. But this one, of course, is four-wheel drive. We've had the Porsche Taycan for about two years now, haven't we? I think it was about two years ago the first ones came along, um, and they started with the really fast ones, the Turbo and the Turbo S, and we've had quite a lot more since. We've had Cross Turismos and Sport Turismos, and we've just had the GTS. All along, this is the one that's really interested me. This is the sort of entry-level rear-wheel drive Taycan. And this is as simple and more or less about as cheap as a Taycan gets. It has one motor at the back rather than two at each axle. It's got a two-speed automatic gearbox. This one has, has the optional performance plus battery. So it's got a bit more battery capacity, I think 93 kilowatt hours in total. It's got a real world range of about 240, 250 miles, which is a, a bit more than the standard car. But this one has very few other options on it. So it's got a 20 inch wheel, but it doesn't have the four wheel steering. It doesn't have the, um, the, the active air suspension. Uh, it doesn't have the torque vectoring rear diff. This is a pretty as bog basic a, a Taycan as you're likely to drive, or I'm likely to drive. And it's a really sweet thing, which we'll come to uh, saying a bit more about in a minute. Interior wise, because it is on the same architecture as the 4 Series Grand Coupe and so on, it feels 4 Series-ish like inside. It's not like an iX or the i8 or the i3, which is just completely wild inside. It feels a lot like BMW's other internally combusted cars, which is, for the most part, no bad thing. Fit and finish are really good. Material choices are really good and soft feel and solid where they need to be and soft to the touch where they otherwise need to be. And ergonomics are largely good too. Maybe too much has migrated to the big touchscreen. There's fully digital instruments and touchscreen. Things start to get a little bit fussy in the instrument panel, but it's largely clear. And sometimes things are buried sort of within a touch screen that you'd want a little bit closer to you, but it does retain touchable iDrive controller, which is great. The thing about touch screens is they're, they're fine when you're not moving and you can see what you're doing. The great thing about a controller is it brings up an icon and it's where you left it. So you can keep your eyes on the road for much more, a much greater amount of time, which is safer and better. I think to look at this car, it's just aging so well, isn't it? On the inside, it feels equally special to sit in. You know, you feel low. Um, the driving position is, is, is really a sort of sporty and enticing. And your view out is exactly the same. It's not one of these cars that tricks you into feeling low by having a really high belt line and a really high scuttle. Everything's low. You can see the road in front of you. Visibility's great. But you feel like you're really low and, you know, really really well installed into the car and in something where effectively you're sitting on the battery pack I think that's a real achievement. The interior otherwise hasn't sort of changed much they've made a few tweaks here and there it's quite a it's quite a smart sort of restrained interior some people have said it's a bit sterile um, it's lacking a bit of warmth maybe maybe that's true but I like it I, I like how smart it is I like that they haven't sort of over decorated it it's not covered in chrome and piano black and you know all the usual stuff you get in premium cars it, it's quite a sort of a 
toned down interior and I still think it feels really, you know, it's got as much technology in here as you are likely to want. I still really like the digital instruments. The infotainment system with this sort of two screen setup, eh, I can take it or leave it. I actually prefer the infotainment in a regular Panamera. I don't know why, I still don't know why they've messed about with it like they have here with the Taycan because it's the only Porsche where it's set up like this. But you get used to it. Um, one of the good things they've done is they've added music streaming to the standard setup. I guess from a practicality perspective, there is a chance that a Taycan won't quite meet your needs. It's, it's a four-door, four-seat car, but if, if you regularly take adult passengers in the back seats and they're, you know, they're bigger adults, hmm, they, might, they might moan a bit about how much space they've got. Um, the boot isn't huge, and it's not like the BMWs where it's accessed through a big lift back that makes it easy to get in there. Yeah, it's a four-door, but it's not the most practical family car you might have. But, you know, it's a sports car. I think the compromise is there to be seen, and I like it. And so it's the way it drives. It runs a single-speed transmission, unlike the, the Taycan, which has got a two-speed on the rear. This is single-speed only. It does what EVs do, as in it makes an awful lot of power from very low revs, this has got 500 horsepower, largely rear biased. The front motor is slightly smaller than the one at the back. If you stick it in comfort, it largely mooches around effectively in rear wheel drive mode, putting a bit of power to the front as and when it needs it. If you flick it through into sport, as I'm in now, it tends to use more of the four wheel drive system more often. Regardless of which drive mode you're in, this is quite a brisk car, but you can't get around the fact that it's also quite a heavy car. It's over 2.2 tons which for a car of this size when we're used to an m3 being what nearly 400 kilos lighter than that i would think you know this is this is this is a big car and although a lot of that weight is low down which means the center of gravity is at least where you want it to be just as it goes over bumps and lumps it does heave a bit it does feel its weight in a way that no other m car even, even something like an M5, which is a bigger car than this. They do not feel as hefty as this, as they, as they crest bumps and lumps and things. There are some people who might say, oh, regular Taycan, not quick enough. I don't really have much time for these people. I mean, this is a 5.1 second car to 60 miles an hour. It's got 469 horsepower. It's got loads of torque. I mean, if you drive this car and you think I need more, I think you need your head examining, frankly. This has got as much performance as any modern road car needs. And to me, it's a bit more engaging than some of these because you can use all of that performance that it has. And also because the motor, the, the two-speed motor, just expresses itself a bit more. It's a bit more part of the driving experience. If you launch this car from standing, full throttle, you will feel it shift at about 80 miles an hour, it hits second gear and it sort of goes again. And if you're driving it more, you know, more sort of gently on a bit of a part throttle again, you can feel that time when, you know, it might be about 50 miles an hour rather than 80, but you can feel it just grab second gear. And there's something that makes the performance more coherent because of that. It's a bit more intuitive. Um, there's a bit of sort of punctuation to it. I really like that about this car. It's just a bit more sort of intelligible as, a, as an EV to me because of that. So it's not a traditional M car to drive. That's not to say it isn't fun at all. You know, it's very quick, it's very smooth. Throttle modulation is great. Brake modulation is okay. I wouldn't mind if it were just a, a bit more easily modulated. And also, if you could choose how much it how much it slowed as you lift it off a bit more a bit more easily. There's a few different modes for that, but it's mostly in here. Or there's one change of mode there but it would be quite nice to have paddles which would change the amount of retardation you get I think it would just bring a bit more engagement and involvement. But what I really like about the Taycan and I think what still sets it apart from every other electric car that's like it is that it is so clearly a driver's car it has a really sporting dynamic soul this car and, and it feels like only Porsche could have made it because other EVs will come along and they'll be faster and you know they all talk about having its low set battery and the advantages that it brings for you know center of gravity and all that there isn't another car like this that has 
made such hay out of that advantage that, have, that that's come along and felt like a sports car. To me, there isn't. And this thing, it's like the simpler you make the specification, you know, the more you simplify, take away the extra motor, take away the adaptive air suspension, take away the four wheel steering, the more you take away, the purer this car gets and, and the more sort of mid-engined character it has, which seems like a strange thing to say about a big four-door car, but remember the EVs have just sort of torn up the rule book in the way that we describe cars. You can't really think about EVs and say, oh, that one's mid-engined, that one's front-engined, that one's rear-engined. It doesn't work anymore because the thing that defines how these cars feel and how they handle is the battery. That's the major mechanical mass, isn't it? If you really if you really give this car um, a bit of a, a bit of an exercise, you know, you take it on a track if you can, or you just drive it down a road like this that you really, you know, you really know. It starts to express itself in a way that most EVs just don't. I mean, it stays low and poised and, and all of that stuff handles really well, but there's a balance and a purity to it, and, an, and just an ability to, you know, to, to keep you engaged as a driver that other EVs just don't have. They don't. They just. They just don't go as far to keep you engaged in the driving experience. Not half as far, I don't think. The steering's got a couple of weights in its heaviest form. It's heavier, in its lighter form, it's lighter. It's smooth either way. You don't get loads of feel back. It doesn't feel as much fun as the sort of M car that we're used to. And critically, I don't think it's as much fun as the Porsche Taycan is. The Porsche Taycan feels like a Porsche. It feels like a Porsche saloon. I'm sure Matt will be in that car telling you exactly that now. To me, it's, you know, it, it's not really in any danger from the BMW, this car. It, it's got its own thing going on. It's got, it's got its own sporting persona. And until, I don't know, until, until somebody really comes along and goes at the electric car in the same way that Porsche has, with the same priorities, I, I don't think it's in, in any risk of being, of being outdone, this car. This car, however, doesn't retain as much of the BMW M DNA with it. It feels like an enjoyable car. It's a brisk car. As EVs go, it's got, a, it's got a great drivetrain, it's got a reasonable range, it's got a fast charging speed, it's got all of that going for it, and it doesn't feel too weird because it is, at heart, a BMW 4 Grand Coupe. But I don't think it is the last word in EV sports saloons. But this is a Taycan, and the, the real secret weapon that it has is its handling dynamism. There's just nothing that's even approached the, the sporting handling appeal that this car has. And, and I don't think any EV really will. There'll be cars that come along that, you know, go further on a charge and have more power and, you know, are faster to 60 and all of that stuff. But until another OEM comes along and addresses the electric car concept like Porsche did, there won't be anything to touch this car for driver appeal. To me, the BMW, it gets close in some ways, but doesn't have the purity of feel of this car. It doesn't have the, the the sort of effortless body control, the natural balance and handling poise that this car has. You don't, you know, you don't feel nearly as immersed in driving the BMW as you do in in this car, even though it's faster, I think. And if it was my 65, 70,000 pounds, this is where I'd spend it, I think. So there you go. The BMW might be good, but the Porsche is still more special and long may it rain. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you sometime soon.